Good afternoon and thanks for joining us right here on Midday Kentucky. Happy Tuesday, everyone. I was about to say Monday. I was going to ask. It are just, you off? It just slipped. Well, you, you, you pulled it off. I did. How are you it was feeling? Good. It was good. You know what? I will honestly say, say if, if you didn't know at home, I'd, I've had Friday and Monday off. I went to Park City, Utah. I'm the ambassador of a chir uh, children's charity back home in Salt Lake. Nice. And I'm, a, I'm feeling a little congested today because it was like 75 degrees in um, Park City. I get off the plane here and I almost fainted. It was so darn it's hot. It's such a difference. Oh I mean, we both mo uh, lived out west. Yeah. And it's that it's dry It's a different heat. feel. Now, yeah. when you first moved out there, did your nose, this is really graphic, did your nose bleed when you'd No, up? but my allergies, I never had allergies and, in Utah. Oh, and you but have But I do here. back here, of course, with the horses. Well, welcome back you know to mean? Kentucky. Yeah. We missed I loved you. It. Oh, thank you. So, well, we were kind of maybe, maybe a... Uh, I don't want to say cyber stalking, social media stalking. <laughs> Is it cyber stalking? No, I, I think that's a crime. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, that criminal? That here? might kind of push it over the edge. Yeah. But you had all kinds of food pictures I know. Well, on your the, one of the events that I had to go to was called you Taste of the to. Wasatch. And that's the main charity that raises most of the funds nice. for the children who, are, you know, who can't afford to, to eat. So this raises about $190,000 wow. in a four hour lunch. And what they do is they have about 30 or 40 restaurants locally and you pay $110 for the ticket. But then you go to all these little restaurants in these tents. Oh, like little stations. Little stations. And then you try all of their food. Oh, do you know, Isn't it amazing? Yes. Then you have the VIP tent where you sit down. Otherwise, you take a picnic and... Um, walk around and there's wine, there's all sorts of things there. Amazing. But it's just a really nice time. Well, you had a lot of seafood pictures, which I thought yeah. was very interesting. Well, I, I went, uh, the first one I went to on Friday night was a restaurant that I helped launch, not open financially myself, but helped them through my shows. And it was one of my favorite restaurants ever. But, gee, the price is a dear. Yeah. Utah is expensive. Yes. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot. But then you woke up real quick. Yeah. It was expensive. I stayed at the most beautiful hotel at Stein Erickson up in Park City. It was great. But I saw you and David kept things going. And we did. We made it. We had some furniture. <laughs> yeah, some furniture. <laughs> All right. Well, we need to get on to the show, my friend. Although Uber doesn't service the rural southwest Michigan, an Amish man in Colon, Michigan, has launched his own, own version of the <laughs> service, service using a horse and buggy to bring passengers where they need to go. Now... While he isn't actually affiliated with Uber, and you can't use a cell phone dial, <laughs> right? Riders say Timothy um, um, Amish Uber is a convenient solution in an area lacking ride-sharing options. <laughs> can I just tell you something? If I would be in a horse and carriage 24/7. I can see. I, I can see you with the entire. I just watched Cinderella. I see you with the footman and the well, person in the back. Well, not just every day. I that could be a bit this. much every day. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, well, what, what do you think? I love this. <laughs> <laughs> Who says the Amish aren't forward thinking, right? I think it's great. <laughs> I, I just, I forget. I often think to myself the dangers of horse and carriage yes. nowadays, but. I can't remember. In this area, they still have cars and everything, don't they? Yeah, it's just they don't have oh, an look, Uber there's service. A car right now, you can see it there. You know, because Uber is kind of still expanding, so some areas don't have well, it. Well, I don't think they are allowed to there, are they? Because I don't Because they're not allowed to use cell phones, so then how could they have well, Uber? No, I, I think they can't use a cell phone to get him no, because Amish he wouldn't people have can't a cell use phone. Telephones. Exactly. Oh, so interesting. I don't know how you hail him, but <laughs> I think it's brilliant. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> but oh, how much did it say? Five dollars. Five dollars. Yeah, that's cheap. Oh yeah, I mean. But I just wonder how long it goes for. Yeah, because I'm thinking, do they go to bed with the sunset and <laughs> wake up with the sunrise? Yeah. Is that is that? Yeah, too you much? can't. So if you go out drinking, don't call. Yeah. Oh, don't yeah, call no, the no, Amish no. man. You need to just walk home. Okay. All <laughs> right. A recent study has found that people aged over forty perform the best when they work only three days a week. Now, the researchers concluded that the brain performance of the middle-aged people improving as the week increased to 24, to 25 hours a week. On the flip side, the performance decreased when the week went over 25 hours due to the effects of fatigue and stress. Now, 
the, profe uh, the professor Colin McKenzie from Keo. Is that Keo or Kyo? This is an Australian study, so I'm not sure. I've never heard of Keo University. It's in very Australia. elite. Interesting. Oh, is it? I don't know. It must be for people who are under 40. <laughs> um, I don't know. Now, they're saying that a lot of countries are raising the retirement age. Yes. Okay, to 65 plus. Yes. So, this is going to cause issues that you're going to have a lot of... Um, workers yeah. falling asleep obviously on the job. I don't think this is true. You don't think so? No, I know some people who are 45, 50. I, have a, a, I had a receptionist in one of my shops in Australia. She was 55, maybe 60, and she would run rings around those juniors. I don't think that it has anything to do with your mindset, but I think everybody in their 30s and 40s doesn't want to hear you say that. We're all for this. Really? It's, yeah. I'm, yeah. If you're getting paid the same and you're working three days a no. week. No. no. What are you going to do? Sit around and do nothing? No. You people use it say, to do other things. Like what? People say, like people who retire who do those games. Yes. What to are those? their minds. Yeah. Like Sudoku. S Sudoku or whatever it's called. Um, they're supposed to be amazing for you. Oh, yeah, because so you're stimulating. if you're just going to sit around at home, why not go and do something? Well, that was one of the points they made in their study. They said it, it's kind of a double-edged sword because they say, Continuing to work keeps your mind stimulated and you keep doing things and it's like action makes yeah. action, that kind of thing. But yeah. then on the other hand of their study, they're saying too much and it's just, did you see that, that shot on the yeah. bench? Well, How I think you could that? do, I think, just remember people, this was people over 40. So 40 to 60, you're really at your peak earning capacity. Between sure. 40 and 55 is your peak earning capacity. So do you think maybe they've earned the three days a week? I mean, if no. somebody's hustled hard their entire 20s I have to tell you, look, as you know, I had Friday and Monday off. I'm sort of happy to be back at work. I understand that feeling. You know, I don't sort of, I'm not a big holiday guy, but I do take it when I need it. Well, and you're supposed to. I yeah. mean, America's the only country, not the only, I don't know, that's a right word, but we take less vacation time yeah, than do. any other countries you do. around the world. I, and I think that's detrimental. It is. I remember when I first moved here and I came to Park City to ski for four months for the season before I started working. <sighs> because I knew in America you didn't get no. holidays. In Australia you get four weeks plus your holiday pay plus 17.5% gross loading. Like they take, but you work hard, you play hard. Sure. And Do you know I, what I mean? But I like that theory. But the Americans on the ski slopes were like, when are you going home? Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Is, <laughs> well, you've <laughs> been here for so long. You're like the little snow flea, yeah. like a sand flea. Like, you just pop up. You're like, oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> just my daily was ski. Good. <laughs> but I think it's, you know, I think at 40, you can still be, if not working, more hours. Ooh. Yeah, I don't tell know us what you think. Your Never employees are going to like Facebook that. Page. And tell us whether you think that's a good idea. All righty, this is something that's very interesting. Women from across the globe are dying from complications of Brazilian butt lift operations. Now, prompting an international task force of plastic surgeons to warn against a procedure driven to fame or infamy by the likes of Kim Kardashian and, of course, Kylie Jenner. Plastic surgeons performed in 2015 alone almost 18,500 butt lifts here in America. But the procedure comes with serious risks. Now, a 30-year-old um, from Florida actually died of having a butt lift. Now, she died on the operating table, and, of course, she left um, her six children motherless. Now, mm -hmm. have you heard of Brazilian butt lifts or what they call the Brazilian butt lift? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm from Florida. Okay, <laughs> so this is how it normally happens. So there used to be an implant, everyone, that you would have done. You no longer need to have the implant. What they do is they do liposuction. It's called fat grafting. And they liposuck the excess fat from your stomach or thighs or wherever you feel you need it. Some people under the chin, but that's not enough to shove into your no. backside. Then what they do is they inject it into your bottom. Now, it does give it a much fuller appearance, as you can see on people like the Kardashians, because their butts get bigger so, season by season. So well, let's just break this. So they've all had it done, you think? I believe they have. And when they actually did a, a few years ago, um, Khloe Kardashian said to Kim, I want you to prove that you hadn't had I a butt lift. That. So they did a scan. But here's the thing. It's your own fat, people. Right. It's not going to show up. It's not going to show up. But I do this on my other show, The Younger You, and it's an incredible procedure if done properly. Also, when they do fat transfers, they can put it into your face. So instead of having a facelift, you have your own fat injected back in. But there is only 80% grafting. So when I say that, only 80% of the fat takes. Mm. Which, look, 
I, there's, there's issues with every operation. Absolutely. You know, when I had my four wisdom teeth out, oh, yeah. you had to sign a waiver Absolutely. at the hospital. I did go to hospital, just let me say that, and stayed for two days. And you sign a waiver that any complications, you know, from your teeth. Well, I mean, you so, do that just to go to the doctor. Yeah. Well, so what makes this, okay, so the implants I know were dangerous. The implants are always going to be a bit When of a I lived in Miami, a lot of people had them done. I asked a plastic surgeon friend, yeah. just joking around, because maybe some of us aren't so blessed in that area. Yeah. And he's like, no, definitely not. It's not even an option. It's so dangerous. Yeah. What makes these in, um, fat grafts so dangerous? Well, liposuction is one of the most dangerous operations uh, that you can perform. Okay. You know the movie Clueless? Yeah. That's how I learned about liposuction being oh, dangerous. That's a problem. Her, no, her, her <laughs> mother died from complications. Of I don't remember that. <laughs> What? You need to watch the movie. Okay. Well, it is a dangerous operation to have. That they didn't actually say why she died. So it's interesting to see there it's are clueless. No, I'm not talking about clueless. Oh, the operation. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's serious. Oh lord. I thought you said Let's you didn't know. Let's move on, dear. <laughs> but there are underwear that women and men can have oh, now I that know. push the butt up. I feel like we uh, should try those. Tell us what those. you think. Head over to Midday Kentucky's Facebook page. Alrighty, if you're looking for a new job, you may consider being a nanny. Recently, several nannies showed off on Instagram the envious vacations they go on, and it makes us reconsider some career choices. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think of this? This is, I have some friends back home in Australia that are nannies. Are they called au pairs there? Um, au pairs? No, au pairs are different to a nanny. Oh. An au pair comes, uh, I'll explain that in a okay. moment. But we're going through the pictures a little fast Whew. if we can get there. So if we could just bring up this monitor so we can just quickly see them. Um, that, my friends who have nannies, they take their darn nannies everywhere. all over the world. Oh, yeah, everywhere. But I actually called one of them the other day because I knew we were going to do this story. And I said, do you fly your nanny business class or economy? She said, darling, premium economy. And I went, okay. <laughs> so you're not putting them in. So she has the kids. With the kids. With the kids, which I think is sort of fair. Yeah, I agree. Huh? But we're talking about, here's some of them in Tuscany, um, the final nanny picture that we can bring up, um, right above Hollywood sign in LA. Like, what is this nanny? Where are the kids while she's posing? <laughs> That's what I want to know. So Did there's she no, push them down? There's no images of the nanny taking care of the kids. No, these are all like it's the basic. The, it's, the, it's the nanny showing <laughs> how we've dumped the kids with the parents. Yeah, oh yeah. And you go out and do. Or she taught the kids how to be their personal photographer. Ah, uh, that's clever. Taking them off. That's clever. And then you can use that as a, you know, a little education along the way. This, it's crazy how these people come into their lives. They become part of the family, go yeah. everywhere, and then you know, I guess women mm. have mixed. It's so they're all hot, let's be honest. The difference in these between, they are, they're gorgeous. Yeah. The difference between an au pair and a nanny. Now, a nanny is someone that you would hire from within your own country. Okay? Oh, an okay. au pair is someone that comes from overseas, normally a student who's just finished high school and hasn't gone to college yet. You know, that year that's gap good, or whatever yeah, it is. That's a good but gap they have to live job. in your home. But that's okay, because yeah. obviously these people's houses are probably Well, I said ridiculous. to a girlfriend of mine just recently here, I said, why did you get a nanny and, or an au pair? Because they're expensive. And she said to me, well, they're not. An au pair is like 300 bucks a week, but they live in your house. So you feed them. You and feed them, and them. then you have to give them a few days off a week, which is a problem. <laughs> but they are she under said, 40. Troy, I don't want anyone living in my house. I said, but you have a housekeeper come over once a week. I mean, it's a little bit of an intrusion, and you know there's always those horror stories that the, they have this beautiful nanny, and she and ends up... And then the up, husband's... Oh, yeah. There's a little bit of a... Interesting. A little bit of a crossover there, and they end up sharing. All right, tell us what you think. Head over to Midday Kentucky's Facebook page. We're going to go to break. We'll be back after this short break, everyone. You're watching Midday Kentucky.